Hi guys, welcome to the discussion of chapter 6, Expression of Biological Information. In this video, we are going to be doing some activity called the Protein Synthesis Activity. The objectives of this exercise is so that you will be able to briefly explain transcription and translation. This exercise is also looking to introduce you to codon and its relationship with sequence of amino acids using genetic code table. This exercise is also trying to help you to explain formation of mRNA. Now let's begin with learning about the central dogma of molecular biology. Without you realizing from the various chapters that you have learned, you have actually been introduced to central dogma of molecular biology. In this dogma, the genetic informations to make proteins are stored in the DNA, specifically at a particular stretch of the DNA known as genes. The information in the gene will be copied into the form of mRNA during the process of transcription. The mRNA will carry the information of the gene to the ribosome to be read and translated into sequence of amino acids forming proteins. The production of protein by ribosome through the reading of mRNA is known as translation. All these seems fairly straightforward, where the information in the gene will be copied into the form of mRNA through the process of transcription. The code of the gene carried by the mRNA will be brought to the ribosome to be read and translated into sequence of amino acids forming proteins during translation process. However, there is a slight problem. Since there are two strands in the DNA, which DNA strand will store the code? Take this DNA for example. Only one strand will store the code and it is known as the coding strand. This coding strand is what needed to be copied into the mRNA to be read and translated by ribosome into proteins. As you can see here, the mRNA carries the same message as the coding strand, except that all the T's in the coding strand will be replaced by uracil in the mRNA. Since there is a concept of complementary base pairing in DNA and RNA, or in other words, A will always pair with T, C will always pair with G, so therefore the strand opposite the coding strand will be used as the template to produce the mRNA during transcription process. By using this strand as a template, you can see the mRNA produced carries the same code as the coding strand. A, T, U, G, A, T, U, C, and so on and so forth. To recap, the coding strand is the same as the mRNA. And to produce the mRNA, the strand opposite the coding strand will be used as the template during transcription process. Let's say you are given this sequence of the gene, and it is made clear to you that this is the template strand. What will be the sequence of the mRNA produced following the transcription process. You can pause this video to figure out the sequence of the mRNA. Since this is the template strand, so therefore the mRNA produced will be complementary. In this case, it will be 5' AUG UGU GCA GUC CUG CUC UGC, UCG, and UAA 3 prime. Now let's take another example. You are given the sequence of a gene, and it is made clear to you that the sequence is the coding strand. What will be the sequence of the mRNA produced following transcription process? You can pause this video to figure out the sequence of the mRNA. Since the given DNA sequence is the coding strand of the gene, and as we have discussed earlier on, the mRNA is the same as the coding strand, so therefore, after transcription, the mRNA will be the same as the sequence given, except that all the T's in the sequence given need to be replaced by uracil. 
U. So the mRNA sequence will be 5 prime A U G A U A U C A A U C G A C C C C A G G U U U U A G 3 prime. Now let's test our understanding. You are given this sequence of the mRNA. So which of the two DNA strands in the gene act as the coding strand and the template strand? Correct. Strand A is the template strand. Strand B is the coding strand. Now that we are good in producing the correct mRNA sequence given any parts of the gene, we are faced with the next problem. How is the mRNA is read by the ribosome? The code on the mRNA will be read in the group of three letters by the ribosome. Each three-letter code is known as codon. The first codon, AUG, is known as the start codon. It signals the ribosome to start translation process. Bear in mind that start codon does not necessarily locate it at the beginning of the mRNA. It can be located further down from the start of the mRNA. But the first start codon, AUG, occurring on the mRNA will signal the ribosome that that is the point for the ribosome to start translation. The start codon, AUG, will always code for the amino acid methionine. This table summarizes which codon correspond to which amino acid. As you can see, start codon, AUG, will code for methionine. It is very important for the student to note that one amino acid can be coded by several different codons. However, one single codon can only code for one amino acid. Let's go on and translate the other codons. GAG will code for glutamic acid. UCA will code for serine. UUU will code for phenylalanine. AUA will code for isoleucine. UAU will code for tyrosine. GGG will code for glycine. CCC will code for proline. GCU will code for alanine. Codon number 10, UGA, is known as the stop codon. The stop codon acts as a signal for the ribosome to stop translation. Once the ribosome has encountered the stop codon, the translation process ceases and the synthesis of the protein is now complete. As you can see from the table, there are three stop codons, U, G, A, as we have discovered, U, A, A, and U, A, G. Now, to familiarize ourselves with the concept of translation, let's try another example. With the code provided in the table on the screen, translate this sequence of mRNA into the sequence of amino acids. You may pause this video to do the translation. The sequence of amino acid in the polypeptide chain will be methionine, isoleucine, serine, isoleucine, aspartic acid, proline, arginine, phenylalanine, and arginine. Since there are 10 codons from the start to the stop codon, and since the stop codon will not be translated into anything. The polypeptide chain will consist of 9 amino acids. Now let's try the final example. With the information provided in the table on the screen, translate this sequence of mRNA into proteins. You are free to pause this video to try to do the translation. Since the start codon appears three codons down from the beginning of the mRNA, the two codons prior to that will not be translated. 
So therefore, the sequence of the protein will be methionine, cysteine, alanine, valine, leucine, leucine, cysteine, and serine. The stop codon in this mRNA is UAA. Since there are nine codons from the start codon to the stop, and since the stop codon will not be translated into anything, the polypeptide chain will consist of eight amino acids. To test ourselves, let's try this question. Given a gene for protein X comes with the following as the template DNA strand. From here, transcribe the gene to produce the mRNA, and then translate the mRNA to produce the protein. You are free to pause this video to solve this problem. The answer would be, the mRNA sequence will be as follows. 5' prime UAC, CUC, AUG, AGU, AAA, UAU, AUA, CCC, GGG, CGA, ACU, UGA, AAA, 3'. Prime. The start codon AUG appears a few codons down from the beginning of the mRNA. The stop codon for this mRNA is UGA. Since there are 10 codons from the start to the stop codon, and since the stop codon will not be translated into anything, the polypeptide chain will consist of only 9 amino acids. The polypeptide chain consists of methionine, serine, lysine, tyrosine, isoleucine, proline, glycine, arginine, and threonine. Well done for completing this activity. I hope this activity will help you to do your assignment easily.